Hey guys, this is Timogen with another King of Avalon uh, KVK video. We're fixing to make a play here. We've got our uh, our King Victor is in Avalon. He's fixing to pull out of Avalon and knock these two PRC guys off of our towers because they're zapping the heck out of us. So he's going to uh, jump this. Now the, the fear is, is he's got a mega rally or mega garrison on uh, Avalon. So there you can see right there he just pulled out of there zap hits and uh here he goes you can see how fast this happens uh and our fear is everybody else's fear is is they're going to rush avalon and uh, do about two speed hits and they can take us out you can see there vic took that that's a good 200 two to three hundred something thousand troops killed right there that prc guy there i guess i'm gonna call him their king or whatever he's holding the scepters uh, he's not near as strong as this guy in the bottom, Lou. Lou is is almost as stronger stronger than Vic, and he's actually got a level seventy dragon, where Vic's got a level sixty five dragon, I believe. So um, anyway, everybody's calling for Vic to jump back into Avalon so they don't two hit uh, our Avalon, which they could easily do. And you can see Vic tries to hit this bottom tower. Lou immediately pulls back because he knows they're pretty evenly matched. And, uh, basically they're going head to head, uh, with Vic, uh, against Vic and our entire kingdom. Now our entire kingdom probably couldn't stand up to these two guys, but with Vic on our side, you know, he's, he's stronger than the, each of these two guys, but they are making a couple of mistakes. Number one is is they didn't know to uh, rush um, Avalon. And this is actually the second time that Vic did this, where he pulled out of Avalon and cleared a tower. Um, the Lou actually hit the tower. He lost about 200,000, but killed 300,000. So in our minds, if you got two guys over here, they could, with two to three speed attacks, they could clear our Avalon, reset our throne, be two... Uh, two you know, two hours ahead of us. How far along are we? They could be two hours ahead of us, and be, you know, once their kingdom is locked up, they could jump over here and take over our kingdom. So um, what we're doing right now is we're just kind of fighting these zaps. Uh, everybody's just replenishing Avalon just as fast as it drops. But uh, the other thing that PRC could have done better is they're trying to go one, uh, you know, head to head versus Vic. Uh, if they'd have just got side by side on one tower, they could have locked up one tower. And the only thing we would have been able to do to them is, uh, mega, mega rallies. And those take time. They could have pulled out and dodged those, moved to a new tower. Instead, they're, you know, these guys are solo guys and they're thinking to fight alone. And they're just, you know, Vic has the ability to fight one at a time, which gives him the, the, the advantage because he's stronger than them. Um... So, um, anyway, so what we're doing here, we got uh, the PRC guys jumping back on this tower. Vic, you can see, he's fixing to go take that tower back. We're so worried about Avalon. You'll see, I'm fixing to watch Avalon. You know, I see that march coming out right there. And so we're watching it. And I want to give, I want to uh, give a shout out to all the little guys that are sending the um, troops over here to Vic. Uh, not troops, all the resources to Vic. Uh, that uh, the, the PRC guy, uh, Scepter guy, he pulled out in time to not lose another big wad of troops right there. But back to our, our supporting cast, I mean, Vic's losing a lot of troops here. He's being fed food, silver, wood, I mean, whatever he needs to be able to keep training troops. Uh, there you see the PRC guy disappears, and he jumps over here to this tower. You can see this is fixing to be a costly mistake for him. Um but uh, Vic's done a real good job. Vic, you know, Vic had the foresight, I guess, to see that they wouldn't jump over here and try to take our Avalon. Uh, I don't know. It was kind of a, a hero or zero move. If they'd have done what we feared they were going to do, uh, it'd have been a zero move. But because they didn't, they didn't attempt it and didn't have the balls to try to uh, two speed hit us, sacrifice a couple of hits to reset our tower. Uh, it actually turned out great for us, and uh, he turns out looking like the hero. So congratulations to Vic. He made a good call protecting the towers and just fighting them like that. Um, so what you know what we're doing here? We're just kind of these guys are just trying to zap us, and I don't really know what they're trying to do because it's going to end up costing them in the end. It costs them a whole lot of troops. Um, but we've got you know we've kind of gotten a, a good. 
a good strategy going where everybody participates in KVK. If you're a stronghold 30 and you're not participating in KVK, you're probably getting zeroed, uh, or at least you're being spoken poorly against in, even in your own, um, in your own alliance there, you know, the things just, you, you need to be participating in KVK, uh, pushing those T10s out there. We, we're basically training T10s just so that we can keep our kingdom. Uh, we really don't fight internally very much unless uh, there's some civil war from time to time, but maybe two or three times a year, there might be a little bit of a fight breakout. Um, but you see, I just sent a load of troops there. That's just to keep Avalon replenished because every time those zaps hit 20, 30, 40,000 troops die. Uh, I don't know if it's that many, but it's a you know pretty good many troops down. So what you do is you just have a march going at Avalon at all times, and then you're just randomly hitting Avalon, and you'll be replenishing troops as you're going. It's a long way to march. Uh, right now my marches are reinforcing Vic, and I've got some troops in Avalon. Uh, so let's get back to the action here. There's a call for scouts to hit these guys, and what it is is a distraction tactic. We want their towers to fill up where oh you know another scout another scout and they're they're not paying attention to what's going on and you can see real quick i'll slow it down we've been running at one and a half speed here just to make this thing happen faster but um i'll slow it down uh that white line that just popped up on the right side of the screen that's my farm hitting him four times yeah four full attacks or full four scouts uh you can see vic ports in and Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. 1,002, 1,003, about four seconds that guy had to respond, and bam, all of a sudden he is uh, looking at the bad end of about a 300,000 troop loss. He lost 350,000 troops. Now I want to bring attention to this. He, you know, his This guy's dragon's not near as strong as uh, Vic's dragon, uh, but that's what, 1.3 million experience points 1,700 assault points. I mean, those those hits really add up for these big guys just to keep their dragons growing and becoming bigger. Uh, shortly after this, uh, Vic ports and actually hits the south tower. Uh, and so he clears another 200 and something thousand troops off the south tower. Now, Lou, on the other hand, is a lot stronger. Vic made some adjustments to his march. The first time he hit Lou, Lou had a better march. Um, structure and so it was uh he actually came out on top and beat vic but vic could you know vic's smart we got some smart people players on our team and he adjusted his march and uh hit the guy but anyway congratulations to k85 we're doing great guys i'm super proud of all of you and uh we'll get this up and posted shortly thanks guys thanks for everybody please like and subscribe